Hey everyone, and welcome to part two of creating our Pokedex using Material UI and React. In this video, we're gonna go about creating the layout using grid and cards, and sort of just sprucing up the look of it so that we're prepared for the next video um, in order to add the mock data and get things actually looking pretty good. So the first thing that we're going to do, and if you are uh, if you forgot where we left off, pretty much um, this is what our current application looks like. So for example, if I go to slash like 2,123, 200, it'll be like this is the Pokemon page for Pokemon number 233. But if I just go to slash, it'll just go to the Pokedex page. And just as a reminder, this is what the finished result uh, will look like. We'll have a search bar. Um, we'll be able to filter out any of the cards in our Pokedex that come up, and we can click one of them to get a sort of bare bones uh, page about the Pokemon that you can later customize once uh, you got the code running all locally. So let's jump straight into making the layout. So if we go back to our application, you'll see here that pretty much what we want in this layout, number one, is we want a very simple um, app and nav bar. Number two, we want cards being sort of uh, displayed in sort of this uh, grid page. And, and for this video, we're going to focus uh, solely on this page. Um, and we're going to worry about this page when we add the data in the next part. So let's take a look at, first of all, um, how to do everything step by step. So we're going to only be working in our Pokedex.js file. And the first thing I would want to do here is let's make this very simple nav bar. I'm not going to add the search bar in there yet. We're just going to have the nav bar in there uh, to begin with. And um, we'll add the search bar in the last video for that. So let's go ahead and import um, Material UI components for the app bar. So the app bar is sort of weird in the sense that it is actually two different components uh, built into one. One of them is called the app bar, and one of them is called the toolbar. And both of these come from the Material UI core package. So let's go ahead and import those. And the way they work is it's sort of nested uh, within each other. That toolbar is going to be nested inside of our actual um, application. So let's go ahead, let's delete this. Let's add some React Fragments. So if you're unfamiliar with React Fragment, it's pretty much just like empty tags so you can nest things properly inside without having to worry about having a top level child. Um, it's really good uh, if you don't want to just have random divs everywhere and if you just need a top level uh, child for your component. So I'm going to go ahead and add my app bar. I'm going to set the position to static so it's always at the top. And then within here, um, we're going to just create a toolbar. And I'm not going to put anything in this toolbar just yet. We're not going to put the search bar or the search container in there yet. And you'll see here, bam, there it is. Um, you'll also notice, however, that our text is sort of gone now. Um, and that's because we deleted it from here. So you'll see here, if I were to put like just a regular div, and it'll be like, this is our text. You'll see that it actually gets pushed uh, back, passed down. Um, our app bar, which is good. And it's one of the cool things Material UI takes care of. You don't have to worry about your text getting, um, unless you set the position to absolute, I believe, you don't have to worry about your text getting stuck um, behind here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our grid container. And that grid container is pretty much going to be for the entire page. So we'll go ahead and import grid from here. And we're going to add our grid. We're going to say set it equal to container. We're going to add some spacing. So this is what we were talking about in the first video, where since we're adding spacing uh, to in between the grid elements, um, we had to add all those things to the HTML page. And we're pretty much just going to leave it like that. And we'll add a couple of just really quick um, items here. So you can see this is item one. And then we'll add another one so you can see um, how everything is sort of spacing out. And you'll see we're setting some basic spacings. So you'll notice here, if I were to change the spacing to one, for example, the items slightly get closer together. If I were to change this to 10, they would get much, uh, or let's say like uh, eight. Um, let's see if those are valid grid spacing options. Uh, so MUI grid API. And this is also a very good place to get your references. So we can see here for spacing, Let's see. It takes, um, where is it? So it takes all the numbers from zero to eight. And pretty much um, it looks like, yeah. So the spacing only slightly changes when you add uh, a large amount because our components are so small. But if we had this, for example, to four, we'll see here that adding a spacing of like one sort of moves it together a, a lot more than um, before. 
and you can see the difference in every single spacing. It's not too much of a difference. It's pretty much, um, it gets spacing from your theme. So spacing by default in theme is four pixels. So if you do spacing of 10, it'll do four times 10, which is 40 pixels spacing between the elements. If you do a spacing of like two, it'll be four times two, which is around eight pixels, I believe. Um, so we can go ahead and set that uh, to two. And now what we're going to do is we also want to add maybe a bit of padding so that our first element in our grid doesn't start at the very end of the page um, or a bit of margins actually. Um, so what we're going to do is we can go ahead and we can create, uh, so we're going to import material UI or make styles. So I'm going to say const use styles equals make styles, bam. And you'll see here we can just say, let's say for example, pokedex container pokedex container and we can give it for example let's add it some padding at the top so it's a bit um, down from the header and let's add some padding to the left and right let's say padding left and let's say like 50 px padding right 50 px as well and then we can come in here we could say const uh, classes equals um, uh, use styles and then we can go ahead and just say class name equals classes.pokedex container and one thing that you'll notice is it'll try to import so these will apply but it'll try to import make styles from until UI core and the make styles that comes from until UI core is actually deprecated so the real place you want to import this make styles from is actually from so we can go ahead and do this we actually want to import it from um, Material UI, whoops, from Material UI core slash styles, just like that. Um, you'll see there's no difference, but for example, if you're using uh, make styles here from core and you're using your theme, for example, if you have a theme set up, um, just uh, instead of um, from core, you have it from core styles, the two won't mesh together and you won't be able to reuse variables um, and stuff between them. So it's important that um, wherever you decide to import make styles from, you keep it consistent across your application. So now you can see, this is pretty simple. Um, all we have here are some standard grid items. Now let's actually go ahead and make this a bit more robust. So let's say, uh, let's create a constant called get Pokemon card because in our end result we actually want the Pokemon to be in cards and we're not going to add any data yet but we're just going to create some simple cards here so <clears throat> we're going to wrap all our cards and grid items we're going to set the size to four so you'll see here if um uh if you really wanted um it to be mobile responsive you can set for example xs to 12 and sm to 4 and i'll show you what that's going to look like and then in here we're going to add some card stuff so for example, um, we're going to go up here and we're going to import um, oops, some components on cards. And I have a video on cards if you're unfamiliar, but there are a ton of things um, that have to do with cards. So if you want media in the card and content with the card, you have to add all this individually. For now, let's just add the card and we can add all that stuff later. And then down here, we can go ahead, we can change, uh, oops, we can pass this as a nose return because we're going to add variables in there later. Um, in here, let's just have a very basic card. And we'll just say hi in here. And now that we have done that, we can go ahead and just add one get Pokemon card. Oops. Let's go ahead and wrap that. And there we go. So we have a single card here and it's pretty much spaced out. You can see that because there's no like set height and stuff like that, um, that it's sort of just showing in that format and it's not looking as nice as this. What we can do is we can actually add card content back. So let's add card content back in and we can wrap all this in card content, which I think will give it a bit more height. So um, let's go up here. And then we'll add the high back here. And there we go. So it adds a bit of padding and stuff like that so that it's a bit easier to um, uh, visualize. And now the last thing we'll do 
um, is let's say uh, we want to add a couple of them. So let's add like maybe four or five cards just to see how they'll space out and stuff like that. And now here's really where you can see the effects of spacing. Unlike before, you can see when I change the spacing lower, it changes the padding on all sides of the card. And if I were to set it to 10, the cards are actually quite spaced out. Um, and you can really see the difference here. But this is pretty much um, how we want the layout to be. Essentially, our cards should be wrapped in specific grid items. And you'll see here, because I added that XS12, um, you'll see as the screen gets smaller, the cards will take the whole width. But for now, let's not worry about responsiveness. And that could be something that you guys um, can do uh, if you want to. And I'll just set XS equal to four and not worry about uh, smaller screen sizes for now. Um, but yeah, this is essentially the layout that we are going to want. We have our uh, app, our toolbar, our app bar at the top here, and then a sort of grid layout with multiple cards that are spacing themselves out individually. In the next video, we're going to substitute all of this data. So instead of just having high in here, we're going to actually add real data from our mock data and have it all displayed properly. And we're also going to work on the functionality to make it so that when I click on one of these cards, it'll go to the Pokemon ID page and actually display all the information. And like I said, if you found value in this video or this whole series as a whole, please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.